Thank you. You know, one of my favorite Christmas stories ever started in 1847. It was a small French town where there lived an old priest who wanted to do something very special for his church on Christmas Eve. He knew a renowned poet by the name of Capot, and he contacted him to write a very special poem for Christmas Eve. Being more of a famous poet and less of a faithful parisher, Capot turned to the Bible for inspiration. As he read the Gospel of Luke, he imagined in his mind witnessing the birth of Jesus Christ. Over the next several weeks leading up to Christmas, he penned a poem and he entitled it, O Holy Night. He was so moved with his finished poem that he thought, this is much more than a poem. This has got to be a song that will move the hearts of men. Capot contacted his dear friend, a well-known composer, Adolphe Charles Adams. As Adolphe studied the O Holy Night poem, he couldn't help but be moved by the spiritual lyrics exclaiming the birth of a savior. But because of his Jewish ancestry, the words were about a holiday that he did not celebrate. And more importantly, they spoke of Jesus Christ in whom he did not believe. Being moved by more than just his friendship with Capot, he felt the spirit of God for the first time as he began to write these beautiful words. Within hours, he had written a musical score and a beautiful poem that was to be read only once at a small Catholic mass, but has become a timeless Christmas classic that would eventually be sang all around the world. Oh, holy night, long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices. For tender breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. And yet more than 150 years before the internet, how would a song like this go viral? and be sang on the four corners of the earth. As Paul Harvey used to say, and now the rest of the story. John Sullivan Dwight was a graduate of Harvard College of Divinity School. He became a minister in Northampton, Massachusetts. But for some inexplicable reasons, every time that he would get up and address his congregation, he would get physically ill. His condition magnified to such an extent that he would lock himself in his house, and eventually he became a recluse. However, as an accomplished writer, he founded Dwight's Journal of Music because for over 30 years, he wrote, he collected, and quietly edited his publication. In his research, he came across a very unknown French poem that had become a song called O Holy Night. He loved the song and he thought it would be a wonderful Christmas song for the United States of America. The song, however, moved him beyond the story of the birth of Jesus as he read these words. Truly, he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression must cease. You see, America during this time was steeped in a civil war. And Dwight believed that Jesus came to free all men. He immediately began to translate O Holy Night from French into English. And for the first time, it spread like wildfire and was sang during the civil war for the first time. 
Later in 1871, in the midst of the fierce fighting between the armies of Germany and France during the Franco-Prussian War, a French soldier suddenly jumped out of his muddy trench. Both sides stopped firing and they stared. As this seemingly crazed man boldly stood up with no weapons and raised his eyes and his hands to the heaven and he began to sing. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. He continued to sing. Change shall he break For the slave is our brother And in his name All oppression must cease Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we with all our hearts we praise his holy name and then all of a sudden the germans started singing the french started singing in one voice christ is the lord then His power and glory proclaim forevermore. And they stopped. And there was no fighting. Nobody was holding a gun. And for the next 24 hours, both sides observed a temporary peace in the honor of Christmas Day. Then on Christmas Eve, 1906, Reginald Fessenden, a 33-year-old university professor in Pittsburgh and the former chemist for Thomas Edison, did something long thought impossible. Using a new type of generator, Fessenden spoke into a microphone for the first time. And for the first time in history, a man's voice was broadcast over the airways. Today, it's hard for us to imagine this. A world without radio, a world without FM and AM, and now hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stations on XM and Sirius XM. But the first time words were ever spoken over the airways, here's what he said. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all the world went to be registered, everyone in his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there that the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, don't be afraid for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel 
a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. To those that were listening to this broadcast and hearing a radio broadcast for the first time, they were so astonished. Some of them actually believed they were listening to the voice of an angel. There was no way that Fezzendine could have known the sensation he was causing on ships, in offices and homes as men and women begin to rush around their wireless units to catch this Christmas Eve miracle. After finishing his reading of the birth of Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of Luke, he picked up his violin and he began playing O Holy Night. So I wanna show you something. The first time anything was ever broadcast over any type of airway was the Luke 2 account of Jesus being born. The second thing that was ever broadcast was the song, O Holy Night. You see, God's always been connecting the dots. He's always first. He was the firstborn among God. The Bible says God so loved you and God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son and that if we would believe on him, we wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. When I think about Christmas, there's three words that come to my mind, love, joy, and peace. You see, there's no greater thing that you need than real love. In fact, probably from a physical standpoint, just as important it is that you eat food to fuel your body and sometimes just because you like the way it tastes. The reality is that's what love is to your soul. That's what love is to your spirit. And the fact is there's a deep longing, there's a deep need that every one of us have here to be loved, but not just to be loved, but to love somebody else. That's what Christmas is all about. That God so loved you. That God so loved me. That he gave his only son. And that we can receive this free gift of love in the midst of a world of hate. But it wasn't just God's love. It was joy. The angels announced, we bring you great tidings of great joy. You say, what's the difference between joy and happiness? We're, we all are trying to find happiness. Like, but happiness is related to the things that happen on the outside. But when you have joy, can I tell you, it's something from God that he does on the inside of you. You see, I've got some, I've got some bad news for you. I'm sorry, I'm gonna give you some bad news. In your life, you're gonna have sorrows. Some of you know what that's like. Some of you, this season is a sorrowful time for you because maybe you've lost somebody that you truly loved or maybe in your life, somebody that has been with you in past Christmases is no longer here. Every person sitting here, both young and old, will experience sometimes a depth of sorrow that you thought never imaginable. Can I just tell you something? When you have Jesus on the inside of you, when you receive his love, when you are going through your worst times of sorrow, God brings his supernatural joy into your life. It was just a few years ago that I had a massive heart attack. The doctor said it's a miracle that you walked in this hospital, 100% blockage in my heart. He said, we've got to do immediate surgery. I went into immediate heart surgery. Father's Day, weekend, 2019. And I'll never forget after the surgery, laying in bed, as I were looking at my kidneys and looking at my lungs and seeing what the damage was gonna be from having what they called a massive heart attack. And as I lay there, there was not one second, not one second that I regretted because I knew that Jesus Christ was Lord of my life. And I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what you're going through right now. But the only sorrow I had if I wasn't gonna be able to live was not being able to see my family, not being able to see my grandbabies and my great-grandbabies and my great-great-great-grandbabies and my great-great-great-great-grandbabies. 
That's what I was thinking about. But guess what? In my greatest struggle, even as I was facing what seemed like impending sorrow of not getting to do future with my family, God's joy came on on the inside. And he gave me the third thing that Christmas is about, his peace. His peace. The doctor walked in two days later and he said, I've seen two miracles in my life and you're both of them. He said, I've never seen anybody walk in here with 100% blockage to their heart. He said, and secondly, I've never seen somebody walk out of ICU two days later with no damage, no kidney damage, no heart damage. Can I tell you, no matter what you face in your life, he wants to give you his love, his joy, and his peace. That's why he came. I want to invite you just to bow your heads just for a second. It doesn't matter if you've ever been to our church or not. Just take this moment. Just take a moment. And I want to ask you a question. If you died today, do you know that you would spend eternity in heaven with God? You see, the Bible says we've all sinned. We've all blown it. We've all messed up. There's no righteous, no, not one. But God so loved us. No matter what we've done, it can't separate us from the love of God. But we have to open up our heart and open up our mind. And we have to invite Jesus to come into our heart. We have to invite God's love. We have to invite God's joy. We have to invite God's peace that the world cannot give. And if you're here and you say, I'm ready to do that. I, I walked in here this morning and my life is not right with God. If that's you, nobody's looking around. Nobody's looking at you. Just, just between you and God, if you say, I need to get my life right with God. In this season, the greatest gift you've ever received in your life that you may not have known is Jesus Christ coming to the earth, living a sinless life, dying on a cross for you and being raised from the dead three days later so you and I could have life and life more abundantly. So if you're here and you say, I don't have that kind of relationship with God and I wanna have that kind of relationship. I'm not asking you to join our church, to be a part of us. I'm just saying, hey, get this right today. If that's you on three, slip up your hand. Nobody's looking around. This is between you and God. If that's you on the count of three, slip up your hand. One, two, three. Come on all across this place. You can put your hands down. Now, whether you raise your hand or not, I'm gonna invite everybody here just to pray a prayer out loud with me. You don't have to say it loudly, but just say it out loud. You say, why do you want me to do that? Because the Bible says, with the heart, man believes, but with the mouth, confession is made. In other words, that you invite Jesus into your life. So pray this prayer with me out loud, everybody. Say this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me, wash me, make me whole. I receive your joy, your peace into my life. And from this day forward, I choose to do my life your way, not my way. Jesus, be Lord of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Can we give those people that prayed that prayer a big hand? Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna do something that most pastors will never ask you to do. I want you to take out your phone. And just for a minute, don't start playing with it. Don't Google, don't Instagram. But just hold your phone just for a second. I wanna give you some direction. If you're here and you say, Keith, I made a new decision for Jesus. I prayed that prayer with you. I received God's love and God's joy. Even though you may not even understand it, I received God's peace for my life. If you prayed that prayer, and whether you have ever made that decision before and you've just been away from God, or maybe you've never prayed that prayer before. I'm gonna count to three this time. And on the count of three, if you prayed that prayer, if you meant it, if you made a new decision for Jesus, I want you to hit the flashlight on your phone when I count to three. And I want you to know you're not the only one in the room that's made the decision. There's a whole bunch of other people who've decided to turn on the light from the inside out. So on the count of three, if you made that new decision for Jesus, take your phone now, go to your flashlight, and on the count of three, turn that phone on. One, two, three.
Come on, let's give these people a big hand. Come on, give them a big hand. A new decision, new decisions for Jesus.